studio is uh, Angela Simpson, who's a professor of respiratory medicine at the University of Manchester. And you also work at the uh, Allergy Clinic, don't you? At the I do, yes. Um, I tell you what, I mean, I, I've always had hay fever, but this year I thought it'd been particularly bad. But um, we were just hearing that piece, it, it's... Maybe that's in our imagination. But I think the pollen counts have been quite high, and we know that patients with symptoms do need to take their treatment regularly during the, during the pollen season. Why do people get hair fever? We don't understand why it happens, but we know it runs in families, so there's certainly a hereditary component. We don't understand that. It's really quite complicated, I think. And there are different types of pollen, aren't there? So does it mean that some people are allergic to one and not the other? or both? That's or? true. So the, the most common ones we see in this country are tree pollen allergies. So there's lots of different trees. And those uh, people with uh, pollen, tree pollen allergies tend to have symptoms that start earlier in the year. So they can have hay fever symptoms from February, March and April. The most common allergy, though, is the grass pollen allergy. That tends to start about the second week in May, peaks in June, and hopefully will start to tail off by the end of July into hopefully. August, hopefully, yeah. yes, indeed. Is there anything people can do to prepare themselves for it, apart yeah. from taking antihistamines? Well, I, th I think antihistamines are important. It's really important to take non-sedating antihistamines because the sedating ones obviously can make you drowsy. But it's important to try and start your antihistamines before you expect your pollen season to start. So if you're a grass pollen allergic patient, try starting at the end of April and take the antihistamines every day. But that isn't enough for everybody, so some patients need more treatment, and that treatment would be a nasal spray, a nasal steroid spray, and that can be very effective at controlling the inflammation in the nose, and, but it's important, at, again, to take that regularly throughout the season. Mm -hmm. And for people who suffer really badly, I know people who've had yeah. a... A jab, like an That's injection, right, yes. is it an annual thing, yeah? Well, uh, for, for patients who have still got symptoms, despite their antihistamines, the nasal sprays and antihistamine eye drops, we can do, see patients in the allergy clinic and do skin testing. And for those patients, sometimes we can offer what's called specific immunotherapy, which is a desensitization to the pollen. And there are some people who swear by alternative methods as well, aren't they? Who, who you know, sort of uh, the, the holistic approach. There, there are, and everybody finds what works for them, mm. but there isn't evidence necessarily behind some of those things. So we would certainly recommend a combination of antihistamines, nasal steroids, antihistamine eye drops. But if you're still suffering, then ask your GP for a referral, and you can be seen in an allergy centre where you uh, and potentially get some very specific treatment, but that's for the severe patients. I was reading as well things like washing your hands, wearing a hat can stop you bringing like pollen grids into the house and things like that. Um, Do you, have you heard? I don't think there's evidence to say that. What we would generally recommend, it's common sense type advice, that yeah. don't dry your washing outside when you're cutting the grass and when the pollen's very high. If you've dried the sheets outside and bring them in, then you're, you're sleeping and, and oh, high pollen. That. That's a good point. There yeah. is, there's, there's a small amount of evidence that wraparound sunglasses can reduce the exposure for people who've got bad eye symptoms but again we'd go back to the antihistamines the nasal sprays keep taking them regularly throughout the season yeah. and that's the best you can do to control the symptoms if you're still struggling see your GP and they can help okay professor Angela Simpson thank you very much indeed thank you very much yeah thank you and if you are someone who's